Hi everybody. This is Nani, my 11 year old Rhodesian Ridgeback. And this is Bentley, my terrier mix. He's 14. I, uh, I don't know exactly what he is. He's probably a Cocker Westie mix. If he knows, he's never told me. I travel in my van with them and a lot of people think that that's not fair to them, but I think they have a pretty good life. It may not be the sticks and bricks life that they had with a doggy door and a three quarter acre backyard, but we get to have beautiful backyards and I take really good care of them. And they're my service dogs. They were certified uh, after my uh, surgery and um, and and after my diagnosis actually is what I meant to say and uh, they ground me when I wake up and I don't know where I am I know my dogs and I know that I'm safe Nani has been sick lately and it has broken my heart and that's one of the things that I want to tell you about in traveling with dogs is please be sure you have a good relationship with your hometown vet. I've been able to call my friend Kelly at Dr. Riley's office in Arlington and even in while I'm here in Arizona she's been able to help me and advise me and help me get the best care I can for Nani on the road and as you can see she's doing better but it's been two weeks of touch and go. Uh, she had a UTI, a urinary tract infection as it turns out, and it wasn't caught at first, it was misdiagnosed. Uh, but she's on five different meds and, and doing better. And so we're out and about today to talk to you about traveling with dogs and what to expect. It is a very small space inside a van, obviously, and both of my dogs have their doggy beds. Nani's takes up the entire floor just about at night, and I pull it out. During the day, it goes up between the seats and doesn't take up as much room. But at night, she takes up the whole floor, and that's a consideration in case there's an emergency. Uh, I have to have a backup plan for getting her out of the way, getting to the front seat to drive off. And so those are the kind of things that you want to think about. Little Nani, uh, Bentley Poo, he has a bed uh, in the passenger seat and um, he just jumps up there and some days when his arthritis is bothering him I'll put like a little milk crate or my footstool or something down to give him a step to get up there. And then that's another thing. Nani has incredible arthritis now and so my friends Colvin and Jim built her a ramp and uh, then my friend Brian, my friends Brian and Cindy had some leftover carpet, indoor outdoor carpet and they put that carpet on there and so it's safe for all three of us to go in and out of the van. But that's something to consider. If Nani weren't able to get out of the van, she's 70 pounds. I probably wouldn't be able to lift her and would have to have help. And also in getting her to the van to the vet if something were to happen when you're camped I highly recommend that wherever you camp you find out oh good girl good girl you find out who your local vet is and their phone number and where there's a 24-hour <laughs> emergency um, hotline to call in case you need to and that changes of course as you travel and you need to know those things my dogs are geriatric, they're ancient, and there will come a day when they won't be with me anymore. What kind of plans are you going to have for that while you're on the road? Those are the things that come up. Also, when it's raining, uh, I don't get to just open the door and let them in the backyard. I get to go out in the rain with them. And so I have a poncho, I have towels, you have to have storage for that. I put stuff down on the floor to protect uh, the floor when it's bad weather for them to come in and out. Um, this time when Nani's been sick, I hope this isn't TMI, but when Nani's been sick, I had to have a bunch of sheets and blankets available uh, so that I could keep her bed covered. She'd get sick and I'd throw that set out and put another set down and it's been a daily trip to the laundromat, I'll be honest. That's part of traveling with animals. And uh, then three trips to the vet. and. So, and the expenses. Just this illness alone has cost me about $187. And I'm very fortunate that I have people that are willing to help me. Um, 
all of my savings and 401k IRAs all of the stuff that I had went to medical bills and to trying to keep my house which was a mistake but I didn't know about this way of life and that I thought I had to have that house and so I, I came out here without the savings that I should have um, and if something happens to me out here this is where I'd rather be but I do have the responsibility of two dogs so I hope this helps I hope it gives you some things to consider and while it sounds like they are uh, I don't want them to sound like they're problems or issues or uh, anything like that it's just things that you have to consider they're blessings I love them I can't imagine life without them and I'm so grateful Nani's here with me today to make this video and little Bentley Pooh he's like this his whole life just hangs out rides with his wi a nose to the wind whenever he can he used to even ride on my motorcycle with me when I had a Harley so my life with my dogs is everything just there's some things you have to take into consideration it's a good life out here. We'll see you down the road. Okay, so we got back to my van and I forgot to talk about heating and cooling when you're traveling with dogs. My two vents on top of my roof reminded me. So we're going to splice this into the video we just shot. And I wanted to say first off, I never, ever, ever take a chance on putting my dogs in danger. So when it's hot, if it's, it, I, I travel with elevation and I try to be where it's cool, but I never take a chance on leaving them in the van when it's too warm ever so right now what I have is two Ventomatic fans rooftop vans that I can direct air in on one and out on the other so it keeps circulating air back there and then of course I have the windows in the cab that I can leave open and I have large uh, vent covers on them so that I can leave them down even in the rain so that's how I handle the warm weather and for the cold they have blankets doggy coats um, and I've got my van insulated now and I run a heater that I hang from the ceiling so that there's no chance of them running into that and knocking that over so it's definitely a consideration when you're out here it's kind of like pioneer days so you have to take the weather into account all the time and I'm sorry that I left it out of the earlier video but I appreciate being able to splice it in and you sticking around to hear that because it's important okay now for real we'll see you down the road